The Pakistan army has cracked the whip after the May 9 violence in the country. One Pakistan army lieutenant general, three serving major generals and seven serving brigadiers have been axed. They've been removed. Pakistan army has called the May 9 violence a conspiracy against Pakistan. In fact, the two images uh, that you see on your television screens have been the most iconic or the most shocking images. One, the core commander's house being set on fire. And the second, that aircraft, that fighter jet at Pakistan Air Force Base, Miawali, being set on fire by protesters, by Imran Khan's supporters. In fact, the Pakistan army claims that this violence was not just pre-planned, but the planning went on for several months that systematically targets were given to the protesters. And there is currently a trial that's going on against 102 accused in military courts in Pakistan. Pakistan army has conducted two separate inquiries. It hit out at former Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan saying for vested political interests he targeted not just the Pakistan army but for a bad name to the Pakistani nation. But that's not all. There is also an investigation against the granddaughter of a former Pakistan army chief, the granddaughter of a former four-star general in Pakistan and the wife of a three-star general. We'll get you details. Also on India First. Has President Putin been weakened in Russia after the Wagner forces tried to march to Moscow? Two top military leaders, both considered very close to President Putin, had clashed. One was Yevgeny Pregosin. He was going after General Sergei Shoigu, Russia's defense minister. So the Wagner forces chief going after the defense minister ended up bringing a bad name to Russia. Or is there a bigger game plan at play here? What does this mean for Russia's operations against Ukraine? I'm Gaurav Savant. We get you details as always. Let's get started with the headlines at 10. The Narendra Modi government hits out at former U.S. President Barack Obama after his minority remarks. Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman says Obama dropped more than 26,000 bombs on Muslims. The former, a former top U.S. official also hits out at Barack Obama. Union Home Minister Amit Shah briefs Prime Minister Narendra Modi on the latest situation in Manipur. Briefing comes a day after Manipur Chief Minister N. Biren Singh met the Home Minister. Opposition insists on its demand that the Chief Minister steps down. Delhi discoms allowed to hike power tariff. BJP accuses Arvind Kejriwal government of looting the citizens. Ahmadmi Party blames the centre for the price rise. Southwest monsoon wreaks havoc both in Delhi and in Mumbai. Four dead in a building collapse in Mumbai. One electrocuted in Delhi due to flooding. The Pakistan army has come down heavily on its own after the core commander's house, the Jinnah house, was set on fire allegedly by Imran Khan supporters in Pakistan who also attacked pa Pakistan Air Force Base at Miawali and ISI offices along with multiple other military locations across Pakistan. The Pakistan army had two separate inquiries conducted into this violence and arson. Both the inquiries were headed by officers of the rank of major generals. The army has cracked the whip on their own. One lieutenant general has been axed. That is the Lahore Corps commander. Three major generals face disciplinary action. Seven serving brigadiers have been removed. 102 civilians at this point of time are being tried in military courts in Pakistan where the army insists that the violence and the arson was not just pre-planned but the army insists it has evidence that planning went on for several months that people were given targets 
the moment Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan was taken into custody. In fact, the granddaughter and son-in-law of a former Pakistan Army chief and the wife of a retired three-star Pakistan Army general have been taken into custody and they will be tried in military courts. I'll get you more on the story, but let's quickly listen in to Major General Ahmed Sharif, Director General of Pakistan Army's media wing, the ISPR, giving details of the investigations that have been carried out and the action that's likely to be taken against serving Pakistan Army officers. In fact, the Pakistan Army has also hit out at Imran Khan, former Pakistan Prime Minister, saying for petty political gains, for his personal political gains, he brought a bad name to Pakistan. 9 May, ko, Motadid garrisons mein jo pur tashadud vaqiyat huye, us par doi dara jati jame inquiries ki gayi, jinki sadarat mere generals ke ode ke afsaran ne ki. Ek mufassal aur deliberate etasabi amal ke baad, in court of inquiries ki safarshat ko madde nazar rakhte huye, ye faisla kiya gaya ke jo mutalika zume daran garrisons, fauji tansibat. GHQ or Jena House ki security or Takadas ko barkarar rakhte mein nakam huye un zumedaran ke khilaf tadibi karwai amal mein lai gayi hain jin ki tafseelat kuch yun hain teen afsaran ba shamool ek lieutenant general ke ohde ke afsar ko naukri se barkhast kar diya gaya hai 15 afsaran Bashamul teen major generals or Saat brigadiers ke ode ke afsaran ke khilaf sakht tadibi karwai mukammal ki ja chuki hai aapko in sazaon se ye andaza hoga ke fauj ke andar khud ehtisabi ka amal baghair kisi tafreeq ke mukammal kiya jata hai I quickly now want to cut across to Zulkarnain Tahir, the Deputy Bureau Chief of Dawn News, who joins us uh, from Lahore. Um, uh, Zulkarnain Tahir, uh, what more can you tell us about the Lieutenant General um, who's been removed from service, Barkhast Kar Diya Gaya Hai, and the, the Major Generals and the Brigadiers? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, you know, uh, uh, this presser of the uh, Army spokesperson chose one thing that the cat is out of the bag. You know, Imran Khan uh, never consulted his political uh, political minds. He always been banking on his military brains. You know, the, those who were close to him, and uh, because of their advice, he came out of the National Assembly and he dissolved the two governments despite complete opposition by his party, Pakistan Tariq Saab. So earlier there was, there was an impression that Imran Khan doesn't, didn't listen to anyone and, uh, and he is a kind of narcissist guy, um, you know, not listening to anyone and takes his own decision. Okay. But this presser shows that the brains in the military, he was looking, he was looking up to for, for, for the thing, you see, like he wanted uh, the, uh, the army chief, the new army chief, who was patronizing, according to him, uh, the PDM government. So he wanted to divorce that PDM what and next for come General... back to him. Okay, yeah. Zulkarnay and Tahir, if I may, what next for Lieutenant General Faiz Hamid, former DG ISI? There are some reports that seem to indicate he too could be arrested. Is there merit in, in this information? Yeah, you know, there are already reports that he has been under house arrest. Although nobody confirmed this, but still these reports are there. And uh, in the lead up of this, like taking action against 15 serving officers of uh, top rank, uh, the action against Faiz Hamid cannot be ruled out. For joining me here on India Today, uh, Tahir, many, many thanks. We'll be tracking the story very closely. Fifteen serving Pakistan Army officers are in the line of fire. One Lieutenant General has been sacked. 
Three major generals and seven brigadiers are facing action. And the former ISI chief, remember that picture of General Faiz Hamid at uh, the hotel, at the Serena Hotel in Kabul, where Pakistan claimed everything was in control when Taliban took over Afghanistan. That officer, we've just been told, has likely been placed under house arrest. More chaos in Pakistan in the days and weeks ahead and we'll be reporting on it. Pakistan, of course, is in dire straits. People in Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir. POJK carried out massive protests against the Pakistan Army's illegal occupation of POJK. They are saying it. The economic crisis in Pakistan is escalating. There are no funds or resources for Pakistan's Punjab province, let alone uh, giving any resources to POJK. So the area that's been illegally occupied by Pakistan since 1947, whether it's Gilgit, Baltistan, Muzaffarabad, or other parts of POJK, people are actually saying, we don't want to be a part of Pakistan. Just how interconnected is this world? People in POJK are seeing the rapid development that's taking place in Jammu and Kashmir, the amount of resources that are being pumped in for the development of Jammu and Kashmir. In fact, Raksha Mantri Rajnath Singh, he was in Jammu, and he said that people in POJK do not want to remain in illegal occupation of Pakistan and they want to join India. Listen. In the वह भारत का ही हिस्सा था है और आगे भी हम मानते रहेंगे अब तो आप यह देख रहे हैं कि पीओके में क्या हो रहा है मैंने एक बार कहा था मुझे लगता है कि बहुत ज्यादा हमको कुछ करने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी पाक आक्युपाई कश्मीर के लोगों पर जो जुल्म ढाया जा रहा है वहीं से यह डिमांड उठेगी कि हमको भारत में अपने को मर्ज करना है so let's try and make sense of the developments in Russia. They've confused many analysts across the globe. Joining me on the show is Zinia Kondrateva, a senior journalist. She was covering the conflict um, in, in Ukraine. Uh, she joins me from Moscow. Also with me is uh, Prabhat Shukla, former Indian ambassador to Russia. Welcome to both our guests. And Zinia, uh, can you tell us, was this a coup against President Putin? Was this, uh, you know an attack on General Shoigu, an attempt to get rid of General Shoigu. What's happening in Russia? Uh, hi, Gaurav. Th thank you for having me again. Uh, yeah, there were different um, theories, different labels given to what has happened over the weekend. Uh, in fact, your report missed uh, one important thing that uh, Evgeny Prigozhin uh, made an announcement ab about two, a couple of hours ago um, stating that um, it was a long announcement, around 11-minute uh, um, voice message, uh, like he always does it. Uh, so he stated uh, the reason why his fighters uh, went on the so-called rebellion is that from July 1, he, the uh, Wagner uh, company, the fighters, uh, would need to sign the contract with the um, um, defense ministry and would need to be subjected to basically to the defense ministry. Yes. So the PMC, the private military company, as we know it, would uh, cease to exist. And that was the basic reason for them to uh, start the march. Um, and that they were attacked by the Russian aviation. They had to shoot back. This is something that we still didn't have comments on from the Minister of Defense, because we know that at least uh, 13 to 15 pilots have died on that yes. day of the Russian army. And Prigozhin stated that around 30 of his uh, fighters have died in the attack. Uh, a lot of statements, but the key is that they did not attempt a coup, that their attack was not, not against the government. They were not trying to replace the government. That's what that's his version of events is. Um, so okay. it's really debatable what's really happening. Um, yeah. But he had raised it. And stay with me, stay with me, Zinia. Uh, Ambassador Shukla, does this then not reflect uh, that the leadership of President Putin failed to amicably resolve this issue because Prigozhin had been raising this issue for quite some time, including with President Putin, that G General Shoigu, the defense minister, insisted that the PMC should report to the defense ministry? Yes, it does. But uh, if I might, I just want to go back to your first question about was it a coup or was it not? Obviously, we can argue about it and we won't know in a hurry. 
But you know, the speech that the, what he called the Abrashenia, which is an address to the nation, which uh, Putin made on the night of the 24th, he very clearly, you know, firstly, Putin's grasp of history is very, very good. And he is very fond of drawing parallels. The parallel he drew this time was with 1917. Yes. And he said that we are not going to allow the Tsar or the, the leader to be overthrown the way it happened in 1917. And therefore, what was a victory turned into a defeat. Now, my understanding is that Putin doesn't use these words loosely. He certainly feared that there was something more serious that was brewing. And I think you can, if you want to understand why, you look at the way the people and the army in Rostov yes. greeted Prigozhin and his guerrillas. They were hugely popular. And they actually waltzed into the army headquarters. Oh, absolutely. There was no resistance at all. So I, I think it's important to bear in mind that the uh, reading of what was happening, whether Prigozhin intended it or not, is something we can argue about. And Prigozhin has but been very careful you know, about it. Zinia, words. you're right, you're right, Ambassador. Let me also bring in Zinia once again into this conversation. Zinia, uh, sure. many reports say that Prigozhin is the second most popular man in Russia after President Putin. Was there an apprehension he, we, he could become more popular than President Putin? Is, is, is that why he's been banished to Belarus? Well, frankly speaking, as, speaking as a journalist, I would say this is more of a headline making of, you know, facts or statements. Uh, because I think uh, hardly, even though uh, Prigozhin has become popular uh, during the, uh, what Russia calls a special operation in Ukraine, and he has done, let's not forget, he has also a huge media network, a network of media channels, um, online media, Telegram, and so on. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's very debatable whether his popularity would be more than of Mr. Putin, and uh, you know that uh, by all the polls, um, Russian president has always been, uh, has always enjoyed uh, quite a popularity over 70 percent in Russia. So, and it has grown uh, during the past one year. So, I think this is just. What uh, next for Wagner you know, forces? Will they continue to fight in Ukraine, or are, it, are they now history? Now it'll just be Russian army operations with no Wagner forces. Xenia, you first, and then Ambassador uh, Xenia. Sure, right. Uh, this is something uh, yet debatable. Um, there were reports from independent media outlets today, again, unverified reports, uh, that there are uh, base camps being built in Belarus to accommodate around 8,000 uh, Wagner troops. Uh, we don't know how, uh, how you know, true those reports are. Uh, we also don't know from uh, Mr. Prigozhin himself what's happening with Wagner. He said that uh, many fighters agreed to sign the contract with the Ministry of Defense, uh, but he said it's not uh, a majority. So I think this is something we are yet to see. But definitely something important to, to look for and to watch. Ambassador Shukla, does this adversely impact Russia's war in Ukraine, considering the Russian forces and the Wagner forces should be fighting together and they're ending up fighting each other? I believe so, yes. I, I think it does. Uh, if you look at the record of the war so far, uh, much of the really successful and effective fighting has been done by the Wagner group, particularly if you look at Artyomovsk, which yes. we are used to calling Bakhmut. The, uh, the town was won by Wagner, and after they had won it, then they withdrew and handed it over to the, to the army. But I just want to make one other point, and that is, you know, in all this fighting about this village or that village, a six or seven or whatever number, keep your eye on the Black Sea. <clears throat> the real fight is over the Black Sea. Okay. Crimea, Sevastopol, and the Black Sea in general. You notice when Lithuania, Latvia joined NATO, there was yes. unhappiness in Moscow, but no action. Yes. And by the way, Latvia is much closer to St. Petersburg and Moscow You're than is Ukraine. Right. The war so is missiles at sea, could... 
but missiles could easily fly there. I'm just about to finish. Give yeah. me uh, 50, half a minute. When What's it comes that? to the Black Sea, whether it's Georgia or Ukraine, you see the Russians taking action. The reason is that if they lose the Black Sea, they cease to be a global power. Absolutely. And, and, and that's why they, they took control of Crimea uh, 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 very extensively. But last 30 seconds, the 8,000 soldiers uh, in Belarus, Zinia, could that be the Wagner forces opening the second front on Kiev, Kiev much closer uh, from the north, or is that, uh, is that not a correct assessment? Uh, it is one of the assessments, definitely, that we have heard from defense analysts today, that this could be one of the front lines. But again, uh, it's just one of the uh, theories okay. for now. Okay. I've run out of time on this part of the show, but this conversation, we will, we will continue this tomorrow and in the days ahead. Uh, Ambassador Shukla and Zinia Kondrateva, as always, many thanks for joining me here on India First.